everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The wearing of the green was seen in Midtown as the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade made its way down Broadway from Linwood to 43rd Street. The Kansas City Police Department was out in force with around 300 officers providing crowd control and facilitating an atmosphere of safety and family fun. And members of the PD even joined in the festivities by providing their own flash mob for the occasion. The Kansas City Business Journal recognized two public works projects recently at their annual Capstone Awards. The 135th Street project made improvements to infrastructure between Holmes Road and Oak Street. New sidewalks, new traffic signals, and traffic improvements were installed. The Choteau Parkway improvement project was also recognized for widening the road to four lanes and adding bicycle lanes and walking trails. The 12th Street Bridge celebrated its 100th anniversary on March 18th. The viaduct connects the West Bottoms to the downtown business district and was considered an engineering feat when it was built. It is one of a handful of double-decker bridges ever constructed in the United States and it helped propel Kansas City to the forefront of the agricultural economy. Now it's attracting new developments with industrial buildings being converted into apartments as well as artists creating new galleries and workshops. We also are celebrating the fact that new residents are moving in. In fact, a new residential project uh, that will convert industrial buildings into 250 apartments uh, was moving through the city council uh, today. And I know there are even more projects on the way. So uh, what you're seeing is the West Bottoms is now the hip, cool, trendy place to be. The stockyards were its history, but uh, where the, the millennials go and where this city will uh, reconnect with its past and rebuild its future are, are again in the West Bottoms. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation. Join us as we celebrate springtime and warm weather with a variety of spring-related programs and events. KC Parks partners with Spay and Neuter Kansas City for a pet vaccination clinic on Saturday, March 28th from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Hillcrest Community Center. A variety of vaccination packages are available for a minimal fee. Visit snkc.net for details. Project Blue River Rescue celebrates its 25th year on Saturday, March 28th from 8 a.m. to noon at Lakeside Nature Center in Swope Park. Volunteers of all ages and abilities are needed to help clean up the Blue River. T-shirts, work gloves, tools, and trash bags will be provided. Visit lakesidenaturecenter.org for more information. Bonanza, an Easter event at the Wagon Trail Off-Leash Dog Park in North Kansas City, will take place on Saturday, April 4th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The inaugural event features Easter treats and contests for you and your pup. Be sure and bring your camera for pictures with the Easter Bunny. Admission is $5 per dog at the gate. Check out our KC Parks Community Centers for free during Discover Day on Saturday, April 11th. From 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., all 10 KC Parks Community Centers will offer free admission, activities, and a bonus workout towel to participants. Visit kcparks.org for a complete calendar of Discover Day events. A holiday unique to Kansas City, Fountain Day, will be celebrated on Tuesday, April 14th at 11 a.m. On this day, all of Kansas City's public fountains will turn on for the season. This year's Fountain Day festivities will take place at the iconic J.C. Nichols Memorial Fountain on the Country Club Plaza. 
Join us in celebration as we admire the newly renovated fountain, honor the return of the original fourth dolphin sculpture, and also applaud the repair of the Seville Light Fountain, which is located just across the street. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. So a couple of our keepers are really into the basketball this time of year in the, in the big tournament. So they decided to, uh, for animal enrichment, it'd be a, a good idea to train these sea lions how to uh, go out and pick the frisbees for some of the teams. So that's what they did. Well, today in the last couple of days, we filled out a bracket, but we didn't fill out the bracket for the tournament. We had our sea lions do it. Our two four-year-old California sea lions, Sunshine and Delilah, picked from different frisbees. Sunshine, we threw two frisbees in the water representing a game and she retrieved one and that one she brought back had the team that she picked. And for Delilah, we put the frisbees in pairs on the wall and she went and she placed her nose on the frisbee with the team that she picks to win the game. They had Maryland and Virginia in the championship game with Maryland coming out on top. It's as easy as one, two, three. Step one, signal. Step two, pull forward and stop. Step three, reverse to park. Just back it up. In addition to solving the crime, KCPD has always taken an active role in linking the families of homicide victims to services available to help them through an extremely difficult time. At the direction of Chief Forte, this victim-centered approach has now been expanded to reach families that are impacted by any violent crime with the creation of the Victims Assistant Unit. Director Doug Wisher explains. The staff is, consists of uh, sworn officers at this point, and uh, there's four of them. And what they do is they're they assigned currently aggravated assaults to contact victims by phone predominantly. And they basically provide uh, assistance in, in three ways. If there's crisis intervention that's required, they'll help with that. They're trained to do that. Uh, other than that, they're going to give the victim rights information and, and compensation information that is required by state statute of our police department to provide victims. If a victim of an, an aggravated assault, for example, has been shot, the detective in the case will, will try to find the, the suspect and work the case, try to get it to court for trial. But in the meantime, the victim has medical bills from the, the wound, may have need for trauma counseling, all those kind of things that, that, that are a result of the crime that occurred may, occur, may, may uh, resound into a, uh, a cascade of services that they need. And, and what we do is we try to hook them up with services that our community already provides, who can provide everything from basic needs, shelter, food, clothing, child care, transportation, and then we have a lot of partners that have, are helping us with, with mental health counseling, for trauma counseling, grief counseling, spiritual counseling, that kind of thing. Uh, we've, had, we've had a victim advocate in Jennifer Miller who's done this for many, many years. So she's, she's been doing it over 20 years. And her focus has been predominantly with homicide victims, families, survivors of homicides. And it's been very effective. And we've, we've understood, and I think Chief understood how effective that is. But we really need to expand beyond just homicide victims' families. And having a staff to, to, to be able to do what Jennifer does with additional victims like aggravated assault, robberies, uh, sex crimes, and, and all the violent crimes that are out there uh, will really help us be able to touch 
a lot more people. These victim assistance specialists, they are, although they are police officers and detectives, um, they are really trained to become, uh, in a very real sense, a, an entirely different element that, than we've had in our police department. If you look at Jennifer Miller and see what she does, they're, they're going to mirror what she does. Community relations is a, is a huge piece of this. Uh, the whole point of the chief uh, with one of his strategic plan objectives was to expand community policing to the entire department. So by doing this in the Investigations Bureau, it's a, it's a piece that hasn't been there expanded to the extent that we, we now can do it. And we know it works. It worked with Jennifer Miller, we'll continues to work with her. So we're giving her some additional help. The addition of the Victims Assistant Unit is one more step in KCPD's commitment to positively impact the quality of life for the community we serve. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Spay, neuter KC will hold a pet vaccination clinic on Saturday, March 28th at the Hillcrest Community Center, which is located at 10401 Hillcrest Road. It'll be from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. For just $30, your pet can receive a rabies shot, microchip, and pet license. Services for unaltered pets cost $40. For puppies and kittens under four months of age, a $10 puppy or kitten vaccination or, or wormer will be offered. Spay or neuter vouchers will also be available. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. To view this program again or any other Channel 2 production, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.